We're online. Okay, welcome everybody to the first uh, Room for Travel uh, Google Meetup where we are a group of travel bloggers that will meet together once a week on Google and discuss all things travel and travel blogging. Uh, so first of all, we'll go through the introductions. Um, so Daniel, do you want to just uh, give us a quick introduction, what your blog is, where you're from, where you're living? Okay, uh, my name is Daniel McBain. Uh, my blog is also called Daniel McBain. And uh, right now I'm living in Berlin. Excellent. And, okay, Flavio, how about you? What's your blog and uh, where are you from and where are you living? Yeah, I'm Flavio. Uh, I'm Italian. I live in Italy. Uh, the blog's called uh, uh, Thinking Nomads and we uh, focus on independent travel. Excellent. And, and Alex? Hi, my name is Alexander Koval. My blog is outandabout.de, not a com address. And um, I'm focusing on my blog on travel photography. Excellent. So the focus is on photography and traveling. Right. And you're down in Cologne right now. Yeah, I'm down in Cologne. Yeah. And Excellent. what's about you, Ash? Me, I'm Ash Clark. I am the brains, brawn, and beauty behind the most alive. Um, uh, that's a travel blog uh, based on unique travel locations and uh, try to put a bit more emphasis on photography as well. And I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I'm currently living in Berlin as well. I'm not in the same room as Ben at this point, however. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, if you're wondering uh, why we've said, some of us may have said that we're from countries that the flags on our name, uh, name bars, don't say the same thing. That's because uh, what we're going to discuss today is uh, travel tips for a couple of the major destinations around the world that each of us have traveled to. And, uh, well, obviously, some people listening into this may not want to uh, go to some of these locations. There are travel tips that can generally be used in a number of locations. And we try to spread the locations out, you know, so that you've got you know, really wealthy cities. You've also got some that are quite poor, but we've tried to spread them out, you know, from uh, South Pacific uh, to the Asia, the Americas, and of course Africa. So what we'll do is we'll start off with each topic. The first one we have on our list today is um, Sydney, which I'm going to speak about. I um, obviously have grown up there. Um, but what I noticed, uh, I spent quite a lot of time in Southeast Asia last year, um, and I just noticed that there were a lot of backpackers that were doing the, the backpacker trip through Southeast Asia, and then were heading down to Australia for various reasons. One, because it's a pretty beautiful country, I have to say, and also because it's yeah. after you've done a lot of travelling, the wages there are quite good right now, which is encouraging a lot of, especially Europeans and North Americans. Who can get the funky work holiday visa that uh, the Australian government offers people from those countries. Um, basically, uh, first off, I would say accommodation tips. Uh, well, just generally, Australia, um, the biggest thing I'm hearing, uh, big reason why I'm not living there at the moment is because it's just damn expensive. Uh, I'll talk specifically about Sydney. Um, and I'll just give you a few tips that I've found or I've heard other people talk about or use. Like it's obviously a lot easier for me because I have a lot of family and friends that are living there. Um, and uh, I'll just quickly glide over those. Um, in terms of accommodation, I would say uh, as a traveler, as a visitor, if you're staying not long term for each place that you go in Australia, especially in Sydney, try and find an accommodation spot as close as possible to everything that you want to see. It's, uh, it's a massive city, uh, it hasn't got a very good public transport system. Uh, if you want to drive or hire cars, again, it's very expensive, fuel is expensive, and uh, if you're not using public transport and you're driving, especially in Sydney, there are a lot of tolls, which are also very expensive. So it, it's going to be very costly, so I would say find a hostel close to you know, the city centre or the part of Sydney or New South Wales or if you go up to Queensland or out west or anywhere that you want. Like, 
get as close as you can to the, the things that you really want to see, the ones that have the closest ac uh, access to public transport. And uh, and then again, also like just get amongst the locals, like find people, get on meetup.com, get on the couch surfing. Uh, you know, if you've got friends or family to stay there, even better. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot cheaper, but you'll also you know meet some really great people that way. That's that's probably my main one. Uh, in, in terms of food tips, uh, again, like eating out is just uh, like ri ridiculously expensive. Like you, you're going to be looking at uh, like a cheap meal would be ten dollars in any of the major cities in Australia, and you, you know you're really looking at there's it, some places now where it's twenty five dollars for a hamburger and a beer sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's obviously very extreme. So you know if you can get a place where you can cook a couple of nights of the week uh, or Aside from that, I haven't really got anything for you. I mean, you know, I obviously, around the world, I was just in Bulgaria last week and a large McDonald's meal was, you know, roughly the equivalent to about three euros. Uh, but in Australia, a McDonald's meal, like a, a, a standard McDonald's meal is going to cost you about $10. So using that uh, as a leverage, um, yeah, I can't really offer too many tips aside from maybe just doing some groceries if you've got access to a kitchen somewhere. And, and making your own things. But uh, are, yeah, the groceries, are the groceries uh, less expensive? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. There's like a, like the German chain Audi uh, and things like that have, have be, become really popular in Australia. Uh, you know, so the, the big supermarket, the premium supermarkets are still quite expensive, but like it, it's still, it's as opposed to, you know, buying a Fourteen to twenty-five dollar hamburger. You know, it's going to be drastically cheaper, and the food quality in Australia is really good. We've got really good quality meat and, and stuff like that. It's one thing I definitely miss from home. How much is uh, meat compared? I mean, the the cost of meat compared to I don't know Germany. We're living here now. Um, I wouldn't say it's cheaper. I'd just say that there's more of it, and it's it's. Uh, Drastically better. We're very lucky in Australia. Like not even the United States has it anymore. But over seventy-five percent of the meat in Australia is pasture fed. So uh, you know it's not brought up on grain and corn, and where the animals just live on dirt patches. Um, it, it it is really good quality. But to be honest, I haven't done a lot of grocery shopping here in Germany. Um, I went today and I looked at the meat section and wasn't really too keen to try it. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I do love the pork knuckle there. It's great. Um, yeah. Uh, aside from that, yeah, any other questions on food? Yeah, but do, um, I mean, compared how how much is uh, because I noticed in America it's hard to um, buy fresh vegetables, fresh. Uh, um, Fruits and everything. It's not hard to buy, but it's expensive to buy. It's um, uh, yeah, yeah. It like it happen? really depends. Uh, again, like being such a such a big agricultural country, like we're very lucky that um, a lot of the fruits and vegetables and stuff are uh, from Australia. Um, I I'd, I'd say very similar to here in Europe. So like some of the prices I saw in the supermarket uh, yesterday when I went. Um, cool. Yeah, I, you know the Australian dollar is just doing really well, but the the food quality is is really is really quite good there. So, um, and especially in the city centre sort of places, they're really starting. To, the supermarkets are starting to accommodate for sort of singles now. So you know you can get places where instead of a full loaf of bread, where you only eat half, and the other half is over mouldy because you're not feeding five children. They're starting to cater with smaller things, so the closer you get to the big like city centres where people are living by themselves in apartments, or you know, a, you know, like the young sort of single crowd. So yeah, um, that that that's definitely a good thing I noticed before I left as well. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, transportation. Should we move on to that with Australia? Why not? Transportation in Australia sucks. Uh, 
getting there, like being such an isolated uh, country, it's expensive to get there. Um, probably the best thing to do, like almost all flights, aside from the ones that go to the west coast of America, fly through Asia. And uh, I, I think they're called Scoot. There's a few airlines like that, like the ones through Singapore and stuff, that actually, you know, Air Asia's opened up a few routes that fly out of Sydney and the Gold Coast. So it is getting a lot cheaper, uh, you know, a few of those low cost carriers. Um, yeah, but but overall, like generally, like getting from Europe or North America to Australia is going to cost you, you know, a couple of thousand dollars generally. Um, probably my biggest tip was if you're really committed to, to going on a trip like that, I would say really look into getting a good value round the world ticket. Um, for the price of a return ticket to Australia from somewhere like London or New York or something, if you've got a round the world ticket, you'd probably be paying the same price and you can stop at three or four mile, more locations around the world. So that's definitely a, a big tip. Um, or otherwise, if you can get a cheap flight into a big hub like Bangkok or Singapore or something like that, you should be able to pick up a low cost carrier flight into, uh, into Australia pretty, pretty easily as well. Uh, in terms of internal travel in Australia, um, I would say, again, like getting around Australia, it's a big place if it's particularly the capital cities you want to see. Our domestic airline service is actually quite good and quite cost effective. You know, you can sort of get between Australia, uh, <laughs> between Sydney and Melbourne or Sydney and Brisbane for, you know, you're looking at about $80 you know, each way per flight and they're quick, they're efficient, they're good airlines, good airports. Um, there's good um, good transport access to actually most of the, the main airports that I've seen on the east coast. I've, you know, I haven't been over Perth, so I can't speak can't speak for that. Uh, internally, you know, we've got Greyhound and things like that. But again, um, in terms of price, you're sort of looking at yeah, sort of the fuel costs and everything in Australia. You sort of you're going to be paying some decent money to get around. So, you know, there's always hitchhiking, but hitchhiking is officially illegal in Australia, it's not like New Zealand. So, so you do run the risk of getting, getting in some trouble there. Um, but aside from that, you know, there are like carpooling websites and things like that, meetups. So I'm sure you could use couch surfing to team up with people that are traveling to certain places. Uh, you know, in the summertime, there's a lot of festivals and things like that in Australia. So, you know, there's always, you know, Stuff you can join on Facebook or find out or connection, but yeah, that's sort of um, yeah. Aside from that, uh, I think one one transport option that really gets overlooked in Australia is the right the rail, like the sort of interstate rail system. Um, you know, I've, I've had uh, a lot of family members use it, and they speak quite highly of it. It is a bit slower and longer, but you really do get to see some really unique parts of the countryside. A lot of the freeways and stuff they go to, so that's you know that's another alternative. Again, um, me personally, I you know I love I love train travel, I love sleeper trains and, and things like that. You know, not that I've done it in Australia though. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, any any questions, you guys? What is about uh, buying a car? Buying a car is uh, a state by state. Thing. Uh, again, the capital cities insurance-wise, um, it's going to be it's going to be pretty expensive. Um, again, like it's just we're, we're a massive country with a small population, so uh, you know, like cars, you get, you get like shitty old cars that'll be quite expensive uh, compared to what they probably are in America, things like that. Um, and then again, petrol prices and upkeep, you know, just every, like I said, everything is seriously so expensive in Australia right now. With your, with your insurance and uh, being a foreigner, I don't, I'm not too sure how that, how that would be, but, you know, a big thing that a lot of people are doing in Australia is, you know, like flying, flying into Cairns and then, you know, doing the whole road trip down the East Coast and stuff. So people do it. It is possible if you all chip in, but I would say like get the car registered in a regional town. Like your insurance, like my parents live in uh, regional New South Wales, so back when I used to own a car, I used to register my car at their address, and it was 
like half the price of insurance. Okay. Um, and then also basically it's like if, if you stick to the smaller states, like your registration costs are going to be less because they have less like road upkeep. So Queensland registration is significantly uh, cheaper than it is in New South Wales and it's same for Victoria again. So that's probably yeah, just do just do a bit of research in, in yeah, sort of price ranges and I'm sure there's lots of forums and things like that out there. But yeah. That's, that's what I'm there for. Nice. Yeah. I think I think the Australian like uh, we don't have like we do have a federal place but they don't you know, e each state is sort of like pretty um, runs a registration system. So if you fly into Queensland and buy a car, then you'll pay registration to the Queensland. But I think each state, like if you're a, if you're a foreigner and you're staying for less than a year, you can use your foreign travel license. You know, you don't need to worry about having an international license or something. Don't quote me on that exactly, but as far like from personal experience with friends that have lived in Australia, they haven't had to get an Australian driver's license until they've been there for more than a year. Perfect. Cool. All right. The last one I've got here is sightseeing. Uh, I'll, I'll stick. I'll stick to Sydney uh, for that, so we don't suck up too much more time. Um, obviously, Sydney is just probably, you know, arguably the most beautiful city uh, in Australia, if not if not the world. And I'm not just trying to be about that, but uh, you know, like uh, I, I get told that by a lot of people who don't come from Sydney, so. And you know, summer afternoons on say North Head and Man and things like that, and you look over the harbour. It really is a, a beautiful city. Um, I, I would say you know, I, I love the actual city. There's lot, lots to do there. Uh, I've already just mentioned it before. The summertime, there are a lot of great music festivals. Uh, Sydney has you know things like the Laneway Festival. Um, if you can get there around, I think the January February sort of period, there's the Sydney Festival, and so the the Sydney City Council just puts on, you know, all sorts of things while that's on. There's lots of art, lots of drama. One of my particular favourites is Trot Fest, which is the world's biggest, uh, world's biggest film festival, uh, short film festival, sorry. And you know, that's in the domain, and sort of, you know, you can get picnics and get together with people, and uh, you know, you sort of get there for the afternoon. There's bands playing and things like that, and there's the sunsets. There's you know, big screens in the middle and. Big grass domain area with you know sits ten you know, ten thousand people or something, and and then after the sun's gone down, they play the top ten list of you know entrants in the um, in the competition. So there, there's all sorts of things like that going on in the summertime. A lot of them are free. Um, the the Lord Mayor of Sydney, Clayton Moore, like she's she's done a big push like in terms of generating a lot of culture. You know there's Gay, lesbian, Mardi Gras, things like that, have just become massive, massive events, really unique. Uh, they've actually uh, extended the opening times to a lot of the museums and things like that in Sydney now to, to late at night. So, you know, if you are doing a work holiday sort of thing, there is a lot of thing, things you can do, like once you've knocked off work or if you're just visiting, you know, you can do all the stuff that you need to see during the day and then you can do all the indoor sort of stuff at night now, which is really good. Um, you know, sort of for, I guess I'm sort of more thinking about, you know, uh, budget travelers and things like that right now. Um, there, there's, you know, there's the big, the big things like you can walk over the, uh, the Harbour Bridge now, I've done that before, which is, which is brilliant. You know, if you, if you do want to set aside the money to do something like that, I recommend doing the Twilight one, which is, you know, where you do it at the sunset. Um, you know, that's, that's a, that's a great experience. Um, but but aside from that, yeah, I'd, I'd stick uh, stick to the sort of city area or the or the northern beaches end of uh, of Sydney, and um, which you know you can get over to Manly on the ferry, uh, which is a public transport system. Yeah, there, there's tons tons and tons and tons of stuff you can do. With, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, but I, I would say that the summer months when when the festivals and stuff. Like that, uh, I'd say that's the best time to be there. Um, yeah, so great, thank you. No worries. All right, well, enough of me and my own voice.
I'll, um, we'll, we'll jump over to Alex now and uh, talk a bit about uh, Cuba, which is pretty cool. I have um, yeah, been very curious of, of Cuba and uh, uh, you're one of the lucky ones, I'd say, that's going to get to be able to say I, I went to Cuba before it, before it opened up to the world. Yes, uh, I actually are. <laughs> yeah, it's, so uh, that's, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that was the whole point uh, in uh, yeah. going there. It was uh, everybody told me that if you want to go to Cuba, then you have to do it now. Yeah, yeah. But it's like when, when I was in New York recently. Uh, yeah, a lot of people talking about now's the time to get connections there to buy the real estate because uh, it's going to be the bit like what's what's just happened to Burma recently, I think. So. Um, um, that was the exact same thought I had when I was in Cuba. It was like as soon as they opened the gates. There will be a massive buyout of or a buy of land and in um, all this stuff, but I guess that's a topic for another hangout. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, um, um, we I've just got here in the in the notes sleeping casa particulars. Um, no, no exactly. um, yeah, I will, I will, I will take it from here. Okay, excellent. <laughs> no, um, yeah, how to save money uh, traveling Cuba because um, in Cuba you can do. Uh, Two sorts of things. You can either go in the all-inclusive hotels, which is compared to other countries not that expensive. But nevertheless, if you want to experience Cuba, you have to break out of this all-inclusive hotels and go to to other places. And there are some, yeah, tourist traps, I would say. And um, I can just write you. Uh, just let you know which ones they are. And we started with uh, accommodation, and accommodation is a huge thing in Cuba because it's, I would say, different than anywhere else I've been because in Cuba you're living actually with the Cuban people together. And they have Casa Particulars, which is uh, kind of a B B and b um, hotel um, where you would stay with the owners in their flat and they would make you breakfast if you want to have, they would make you um, dinner and stuff like that. And this is quite cool because for 25 cooks you can have, uh, normally it's 25 cooks, it depends on you what your um, negotiation skills are and everything, but 25 cooks is a, is a rough number of what you should pay for um, one room. It de doesn't depend how much people are in there, it's just one room. So if you are two people, it's still 25 cook. And 25 cook, I would have to look it up right now, but it's 1 euro 18 or something. Um, and in dollars, I'm not sure what it is right now. Probably just um, a dollar. Yeah, but, but it's, it's quite cheap. I mean, it's, uh, it would, it's hostel prices, I would say. Um, but you get the, the real living experience, uh, living with the Cuban family together or living with the Cuban person together and you can talk to them as, I mean, most of them speak English and if they're not, I hope you have some Spanish that you can uh, put out there and talk to them. Um, actually, I had, I'm speaking none uh, Spanish, so I was, uh, we did, did sign language and all that stuff, but it was really funny. Um, and I got to know some people and it was interesting to talk to them about the whole thing and uh, yeah, you got close to the people or close to the country better than just going to a hotel and talking to the hotel stuff. Um, what I would say, most of them are offering you a dinner that you can buy and dinner that you can buy there is mostly more expensive than you would get in a restaurant so we, we only had one or twice in the whole three weeks we were there dinner at one of our hosts place um, which was really good food I wouldn't say it. I mean it's it's really good food and you know that when you're going there you get good food but it's a bit expensive and you can get cheaper um, meals on the street or uh, going into a restaurant and also you get all the this flair going to a restaurant which is uh, for example, in Trinidad or in uh, Havana, you're on the street and you're seeing, you see the people going by and everything, um, which I like much more. So I would recommend going to a restaurant. That's the only time where I would recommend going to a restaurant in a country. Um, yeah, so you go to this Casa Particulars and um, then what do we have here? Ah, what would be another saving tip? Transportation in um, in Cuba is quite hard to get by. Um, it's not sure that you, 
if you're traveling the country, you have to be prepared, and you have to be prepared pretty good. If you're coming to a destination and staying there, let's say a city like Trinidad, and you're staying there for three days, you better at your arrival get your ticket back out of the uh, of the city because um, it might you might end up staying there for a few more days than you anticipated. That's what happened to me. So get your your things in order, you travel, and you will be good, and you will save some money. Um, the other thing. So, did, sorry, did you did yeah. you get to Cuba from Trinidad? Did you? No, I got to Cuba uh, to Havana. So I flew in from Bolivia, and then to Lima, and from Lima to Havana. Okay. Was, yeah. Um, yeah. So we were. Um, yeah. What? What? Uh, how to save money? Um, there is this tourist trap of selling you cigars, and if you, when you are in Cuba, you want to smoke cigars. What I would say is, don't buy the cigars on the street. At least not the the ones that they're trying to sell you as Cohibas and uh, Julio and Romiet and all this stuff. I'm not a big cigar smoker, but um, there are they cost 25 bucks, and for 25 bucks you can and you get like a handful of cigars, which they say it's rolled in this O oh, with their grandmother who rolled for Castro and everything, which is quite perfect, but they just taste like shit, and they're not the real stuff, and for 25 you get four good cigars or two good cigars, and you're good to go for the rest of your life, I guess. If you smoke the Cohiba, how many Cohibas are you going to smoke? Yeah. And I, <laughs> I smoked one, and I was done for the next half year. <laughs> yeah, so don't get the big pack. Just get get yourself a good one, and you will save some money on that one as well. Um, and then, I mean, that's the that's the best tip I got from a Cuban actually. And we were sitting there and drinking our um, mojitos, and he told us, "Why are you drinking these mojitos, which cost like four euros one uh, one one cocktail?" And we were like, "Because it's a, it's cheap." And he's like, yeah, but if you would buy a rum bottle at the bar, you get it for 7 or 8 euros. And you could buy the Coke and everything, and you would be done with 10 euros for a whole bottle of rum. So I would recommend, if you want to go out and party, um, and you don't really care for what you would like to drink, a whole bottle of rum with some, uh, you get some lime, you get some Coke, Coke or whatever you like to drink and uh, you're good to go for the for the evening or for the night. Excellent. That's, uh, did, did, you, did you spend the majority of your time in Havana? Um, like, do, do many people leave Havana or...? Uh, I spent like in the end 10 days in Havana. Okay. And Or is it only 8? I'm not sure. But I would say the majority of time I was, spent, I was spending in Havana because Havana is Beautiful, and it's yeah. there's so much stuff to do, and I, w I can recommend you so much hostels, uh, good restaurants where you can eat and ice cream, yeah. and all that stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah, it sounds, yeah, it's, yeah, it sounds like a pretty incredible place. Um, yeah, what, what what's next? Like? No, that's the that's a small wrap up of uh, yep. of Cuba. Okay. I didn't want to go too much into detail. Everybody Excellent. who wants to know more can contact me, and uh, I will give a detailed information about everything. Yeah. And yeah, also uh, some numbers for the Casa Particulars, because it's hard to find them on the internet, but I didn't want okay. to put the numbers out right now, but if you contact me on my website or Twitter or whatever, um, you get the numbers, and I will get you in the system, because it is actually a system. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, like, let, let's keep it keep it rolling. So, so Flavia, you were going to uh, you were going to talk to us a bit about South Africa. So, do you want to uh, sure hit, hit us with the with the, so, with the local knowledge on uh, South Africa? As you know, I prepared a presentation. Let's see how this works. So He's the first only time, one so. who's actually prepared. Yeah. Well, let let's see the let's see the result. Then we will um, say who was actually prepared or not. Let let's say I tried at least. Huh? I made yeah. my homeworks. You just hope the cool. the porno you're watching beforehand doesn't pop up. 
<laughs> so wait, I will I will highlight you so that we will see your presentation the whole time. Here we go. So I was in South Africa. I was in South Africa and it was a great time because South Africa is a fantastic country, as you can see from the picture. Can you see the picture? Yes, we can. More or less. South Africa is a great country and there is a, it is, it's a huge country, so there's a, a lot to do and a very different uh, environment where to live in. So the first question you, you would ask yourself is why going in South Africa? Speaking very, uh, uh, very generic point of view, things to do in South Africa are two. One, of course, are safaris, wild animals. Everyone in Africa wants to see the wild animals. But having a safari in Africa is costly. So if you want to have such kind of experience, you have to be prepared to, uh, to handle uh, uh, quite a large uh, sum of money. Still, you can have a uh, cheap, you can find quite, uh, quite a number of good solutions. Cheap, camping, safari are the best one. You are in touch with nature, you are in touch with the uh, local guides who will give you all the advice, you're safe, you just have to uh, have a bit of uh, attitude for adventure. I made an example here for 400 euro or 550 uh, US dollars more or less you get three days transportation, meals, guide, entry fee in the safari park, sleeping bag, extra activities like bird watching or uh, night uh, um, guided tours, everything, the world three days tour is, is included and it's actually a good deal because South Africa is not necessarily a cheap country so you find, if you want to have your own uh, experiences and you're ready to pay for that having a, a, a full um, uh, all-inclusive budget uh, solution may be a good deal. The second thing to go in, safari, in Af South Africa for are beach parties. South Africa has huge wonderful beaches and yeah in South Africa there are penguins. <laughs> so what I made, I was in Cape Town, I was working in Cape at that time and I said, uh, I just told myself I don't want to go huge in safaris, in the inlands, in uh, the deserts and jungles. I want to relax, I want to have fun, I want to take all the south coast and a great way to do that is the bus bus. Bus bus, you buy the ticket, you go all the way up and you take as much time as you want because you can stop and uh, uh, hop on, hop, hop off, they call it, you get dropped out every time you want they drive you to the exact location of the backpackers hostel you want to uh, uh, you want to go and you can uh, stay there as long as you want all in one ticket so not bad at all what is backpacking in South Africa? Backpacking is the best way to travel in South Africa because there are huge, uh, a huge number of great hostels in fantastic locations they are cheap, one, one, they are comfortable question. yeah give me um, are you changing your, uh, your uh presentation because we just see Port St. Jones. Ooh, yeah, that's strange because I'm not there. Uh, you don't see backpacking in South Africa? No. Mm. no. That's, you see, that's why yeah. I... Uh, oh. There we go. Ah, maybe uh, because you uh, made it, did you made it a big presentation thing? No, that's a few slides more. Yeah, 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 but are you in a presentation mode? I was. Yeah, I so I guess uh, Google, Google can pick up your presentation mode. Just uh, oh, show us so the slide in here, in the program. So Now we see everything, backpacking in uh, South Africa. Yeah, that's and good. And if I go to the next right, one, you see on. the next one. Show us. Go to the Do next you see one? the next one? No, no you're not no. seeing the next one. Okay, okay, let's try it. Simple, yeah. Now, now we see the other one. Yeah, it's yeah. the Bay. So yeah. I was saying, backpacking in South Africa. Uh, uh, the usual price for a uh, for a bed in a backpackers hostel is about uh, uh, 100 South African rands, which is 11 US dollars or eight euros. You got a, a bed in a four to twelve bedroom. Uh, usually got free tea all the whole time, hot tea. And uh, there is free Wi-Fi sometimes, but better to ask before. Uh, and a furnished kitchen, what you can cook uh, your meals. So 
great deal even to uh, save uh, quite uh, money because eating outside in South Africa may not always be uh, that easy and uh, cheap for all travelers. And the, the great thing is common era with bar and uh, parties and there is, there is always a cool atmosphere. One of those places where I'm going to try, I'm trying to be very quick, Plattenberg Bay on the Garden Route. Uh, I went from uh, Cape Town to Johannesburg, so from the Garden Road you enter the uh, wild coast where you got Coffee Bay in this uh, huge green coast, just beautiful, no, no houses, no roads, you can uh, walk and uh, uh, have, have your, your trips outside for hours before meeting anybody at all. And what was uh, even here there was um, a few good hostels with funny people where we had uh, a party every night. 100 uh, rands, 10 dollars every night, and we were fine. Here's an example of the common art of these places in uh, in Coffee Bay. The coffee shack was great. We got uh, the uh, the pool, uh, we got uh, the bar. We we just opened the tab and had our parties every night. Jung jungle. Uh, here we go. Port St. Joe is not a, such a fantastic place. That's more in the jungle, so you can uh, have a, a great range of uh, hiking tracks and trails, and still a great pl place for have, for having bars. Durban is something different. Durban is the main town on the uh, um, East Cape, so uh, kind of uh, of uh, how can I say a Miami of South Africa. So great claps, uh, party people, uh, waves for surfers, and uh, huge beaches for sun lovers. Happy Hippo <laughs> was the large, is the one of the largest, largest uh, backpackers in uh, South Africa, and uh, a good choice for everyone who has to spend a few nights in uh, in Durban. Johannesburg is a totally different story. Don't go. All people in South Africa will say you don't go in Johannesburg if you don't really, 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 really need to go there. Johannesburg is, for example, a, a common destination for to start a, a safari, but people do not go in Johannesburg just to have fun because Johannesburg is crowded, is loud, is uh, is dangerous in uh, the evenings. And still uh, a fascinating town. I was uh, uh, I was hosted by a few friends, where, which is always the coolest way to travel, I, be, I believe. And I had my uh, I enjoyed my time, but think twice before going to have Johannesburg. And it has the the worst backpackers atmosphere uh, ever. They're the, the the most expensive and uh, not the most beautiful at all. Finally, just a few generic tip. If you have a tent, even if you plan to backpacking so and go to go to hostels, take your tent with you. Most hostels allow to uh, plant plant the tent in the garden, and it's gonna cost like uh, one tenth or one fifth or the the usual price. You go from uh, ten U.S. dollars for a, for a bed in a common room to three or four dollars or two dollars for um, having your tent in in the garden. When you go to the hostel, you will probably want to open a, a, a tab in the bar so you can just write down everything you consume. Be careful because drinking every night without having to pay day night by night may make your budget experience a totally different thing. Like, oh my God, I wasted all my money one night. What I'm going to what I'm going to do now for the rest of the holiday in South Africa? <laughs> and a few friends who scored quite a record in the bar. And the uh, best way to travel on a budget, make your friends and get hosted, ever. Yeah, <laughs> okay, great. That was good. Cool. Um, yeah, I definitely, definitely want to go to South Africa now. <laughs> yeah, now I want to go as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was uh, uh, understandable, great. most part. All right. Least. All right. Daniel, uh, do you want to just quickly uh, run us through um, some tips on Japan, on Tokyo, I think, is what you were going right. to talk specifically on? Yeah, I'm just going to focus on Tokyo. Uh, a lot of the tips work for all of Japan, though. So, um, it's working? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're hearing you. Okay, I can't hear myself. Um, <laughs> but basically... Tokyo but you know you're pink, pink, right? <laughs> I am pink. <laughs> uh, but Tokyo has notorious for being expensive, um, but really it isn't. If you know what you're doing, uh, you can spend less than you would anywhere in the U.S. or in most of Europe traveling in Tokyo. Uh, the most expensive part is accommodation, but 
um, if you go to an area called Minami Senju, and actually I should mention at this point, um, if you look here, that's a travel guide to Tokyo. So all the names I'm saying, you can find them written there, and so I don't have to write them now. Uh, anyways, Minami Senju Station, it's considered a slum, this area, but a slum in Japan is like the nicest area in the U.S., you know, it's beautiful compared to the U.S., so don't worry about it being a slum. And uh, in the past, it had a lot of cheap um, places to stay for day laborers, and you could find rooms from $10 U.S. there pretty easily. Um, these days, backpackers are going there, so a lot of the hotels are geared towards backpackers. In those, you'll pay a little more, maybe $20. Um, yeah, so this is a country where hostels cost 30 to $40 for a dorm bed, so $20 for a single room, it, it's a big saving. The only problem is a lot of the places still have curfews, and the location is maybe a little inconvenient, but it's just a little bit north of the main hostel area, so it's, the hostels are inconvenient too. So that's not too much of a problem. Um, if you're staying longer, for a week or more, uh, you you can get an apartment. There's a few companies that rent apartments for foreigners um, called Sakura House and Oak House. Again, they're on the web page. They have links. Um, their websites are pretty good. You can see pictures of the rooms, everything, and you can get some pretty cheap places and you'll have a kitchen and everything in too. Um, so if you're staying more than a week, that's probably the best way to go. Um, another big expense some people think is food, but food is actually really cheap. Um, of course you're going to eat sushi once, you're going to have a couple of expensive meals, but for most of your meals, go to small places and go to places that sell meal tickets from a vending machine. Uh, basically you put money in, you click the button of the food you want, and then you get a little receipt. Then you give the receipt to the cook and he makes your food. And when you buy your meals like this, there's no waiters. So the restaurant saves money and you save money. You'll pay less than $5 for a full meal. Rice, soup, salad, meat, everything. Uh, another option are bento. Um, these are pre-made boxes. You buy them at the convenience stores, under five dollars, department stores. And there's a few chains that make them ready to order. So you order it, they cook it, put it in a box, and you take it. So it's warm. These are also around five dollars. If you get them without rice, they're around three dollars. <laughs> and a lot of the accommodation places they have rice cookers, so you can, you can eat for three dollars a meal in Japan if you use the rice cookers. Um, finally, transportation. Um, basically, don't ever take a taxi in Japan. Uh, it's like $50 to go across the street, so don't, don't use a taxi. It's nice. They wear suits. They look good. Take, take your money, so don't do it. Um, the trains go everywhere. Uh, but one key with the trains is there's Japan Railway, is the main company run by the government, but then there are a lot of private lines, too. And most people, when they go somewhere, they take combination of different companies. And each time you switch companies, you your price goes up. So for each trip, try to stick with one company. So take only Japan Railways or only k or, or whatever the company name is. And if all the trains are from that same company, you just pay one fare. And you save a lot of money doing that. So instead of paying six, seven, eight dollars to get somewhere, you pay two dollars. And you do that every trip, you save a lot. And basically, uh, yeah, those are the top three tips I have. I tried to keep it quick. Um, no, it's good. Yeah. For my blog, you'll find a few more things. Excellent. I've got a, I've got a post on uh, keeping cheap in Tokyo as well. <laughs> <laughs> Steal your thunder there. Uh, you should no. write it down there, though. See, mine's written conveniently. Ah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But do you know what we do the next time? The next time we use bit.ly links, so it's the URL yeah. might will be much shorter. Yeah, but yeah, perfect. Google link, I know. Yeah. I realized yeah. that when my link covered the screen. I just won't <laughs> put links there. I just did it today because I didn't know what else to do. All right. Um, well, just as we're wrapping up, I was just going to say, uh, if, if each of us just have a, a general savings tip, like that can be uh, generally. Um, Let's start with you, Alex. Have you got? No, no. Let's start with Daniel's. I like Daniel's saving kit. I can start with Daniel. <laughs> I, I actually have a couple. Uh, again, one is the first one I just said for Tokyo. Don't take taxis. Like wherever you are, avoid the taxis. Even in countries where taxis are cheap, the taxi drivers are assholes, and they're going to try to rip you off. So as much as you can, don't take a taxi. Yeah, that definitely goes to Sydney. I would say yeah. I veto that. Oh, why? Yeah. Um, if 
to well, go. You're rich. You have a job. I don't have a job. I can't afford <laughs> that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not like that. But if you go to countries like Kenya and if you go to cities like uh, Nairobi, just taking the. I mean, there's so much robbery going on and stuff like that. It's yeah, much I'll, cheaper to take a taxi actually every time than to get robbed every tenth time or something like that. Because that's a good point. I've never been to Africa. I'm talking about countries where you don't get robbed everywhere you go. Yeah, no, no, no that's yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's one. The other, uh, there's a couple more. Like I said, I can't even remember. What did I say before? The one with the restaurant. I like the one with the restaurant and the English menu. Oh right, uh, that's a, that's actually a good one, especially in Asia. Maybe it's different in Africa, but like in Asia, if the restaurant has an English menu, if you can read the menu, you're going to get ripped off, basically. You're paying twice the price uh, for the same food. There's even some cases yeah. I saw in China where there's, two, there's a menu on the front is Chinese and the back is English. It's the exact same thing. It's three times the price. Yeah, I, I can that off, They just laughed. They said, oh, you can read it. Oh, okay, you can read the cheap. Yeah, I, I can, you know, the same sort of thing happened in Egypt for me as well. Like they give you the menu in English and then they give you the bill in Arabic. Um, you know, like, lucky for me, I kind of, through my time in the Middle East, I picked up how to read the numbers, but that's definitely... Oh, you don't yeah. need to travel to fancy countries for that. We do the same in Italy with <laughs> German and uh, uh, Australian <laughs> and uh, British uh, and travelers. Yeah, we just we, yeah we do it in Australia as well. Except we just do it to everybody, like including the locals. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely yeah, eating with the locals. All right, um, back to Alex. Do you want to give us a tip now? Actually, I can't give better tips than uh, Daniel already did, so I would skip. Uh, no, I don't have a general... Love you. Love you. Have you go on then? Huh? I have, I have uh, a good tip. To, I have just a, a general tip. traveling tip before we yeah, finish. To, to help to, to travel, uh, to budget travel tips. If you're traveling, enjoy your time. I, I hated seeing people coming back to hostels and uh, uh, telling a story starting with I had to argue bargain for three hours with the guy, yeah, but then good. in the end I saved 50 rupees. 50 rupees are not even one euro, at, or 60 or 70 cents of euro. Yeah. You didn't save anything use. You wasted three hours of your time. I'm not a good budget traveler. I, I always take all the money I have with me every time in my pocket. Because I think if I have the most fantastic experience in my life right now, right yeah. this evening, I want to have the money to pay for it. Yeah, excellent. So maybe That's good. I have one more tip, but maybe it's not good for Flavio <laughs> after what he said. But basically, <laughs> I've heard this so much from people. If beautiful girls come up to you and invite you to go with them to a bar or a tea <laughs> house or a restaurant. Yeah. You're paying yeah, you four times well the price. You your money now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got, exactly. to pay for their, you've got to pay for their time. Yeah. That's exactly well, the reason why I have so much money with my pockets every time. Not just that. Like <laughs> you go to the restaurant and you see a bowl of peanuts cost $2. But then when you get that, you realize one peanut costs $2. And your yeah. bowl is $300. And then yeah. four big men come in and the women are gone. And yeah, you have to pay they, they march to the ATM. Yeah. Yeah. This happens in China all the time, and it happens in a lot of other places too. Yeah. Beautiful women don't like you as much as you want them to. Yeah, well, my, my friend told me before I lived, Flavio, if we beautiful women never invited you for a drink before, don't think they will start in Brazil or Thailand or Africa because you, you, uh, beca you became beautiful on, uh, during a fun. night. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I have a, a tip that it's in general. I recognize it's uh, you can have it everywhere. It's not a saving tip, but it's a tip. I mean, as soon as they ask you something in English and they ask you, you know it's a rip off. They want something from you. But yeah, <laughs> as soon they are, as soon they speak English and as soon they ask you, you can go. Definitely, it's going to be a rip off. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let's uh, wrap it up. I'll um, I'll just say uh, again back to the transportation option. Like just before, especially capital cities and major cities and stuff. Like really, uh, j just do a little bit of research into, um, like like say for instance here in Berlin. You know they do have a tourist card that you can buy that gets you on the subway. You know for three or four days or or, or whatever. And you know, instead of paying two euro forty per trip, you know, you can uh, you can get it sort of. Uh, 
I think Montreal is another example. I think you know for for thirteen dollars Canadian dollars or something, you know, sort of gets you unlimited travel for three days. You know, instead of paying two or three dollars per per ride. So yeah, I, I would definitely say uh, stick to public transport where you can, and um, yeah, just see if they have like a tourist package that you can get and you can save some big dollars and really get across the city. Um, yeah, with that. So. With that, um, I, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks, thanks for your time, guys. Um, that was a good effort. We'll probably uh, work on our efficiency and uh, time restraints for next week. But uh, next week we're going to talk about scams a bit more. You know, we sort of just touched a bit on, on a few of those then. But we'll go we'll go uh, go into a bit more of what are the typical scams in uh, some of the big uh, travel destinations around the world and just things that you know you. Maybe if you've already been on a trip, you, you can contribute as well. Uh, send us some questions, um, or otherwise we'll just we'll just share with some of the ones that we've come across in our time, and hopefully that helps you guys in your travels as well. All right, so thanks for listening in, and um, gentlemen, I will see you guys next week. See you then. Bye. All right, ciao. Thanks.